Hi, this is Virinder Singh from ToolsQA.com. I welcome you to class number five on Cucumber in Java. In this class, we will talk about uh, step definitions. Most importantly, we will try to create a scenario from start to end. We will program the scenario from start to end. Uh, we had already talked about Cucumber scenarios and step definitions in our previous classes, but at that point in time, we never took a concrete example. In this class, we will take concrete examples, uh, which will help us understand Cucumber concepts in a better way. So let me just quickly take you through the agenda of this class. Uh, the agenda for this class is, first, we will formalize a couple of login tests. So the first thing that we will do is we will find out a couple of tests which we can use throughout our classes in order to understand Cucumber concepts. Now, at, at this point, during the start uh, in this class, we will just create three scenarios. But later on, uh, to understand more Cucumber concepts, we will add more scenarios. After that, we will talk about the AND keyword. Uh, this is a new keyword that, uh, that I will introduce today. It is in addition to given, when, and then that we discussed earlier. After that, we will just start with our first login scenario, and we will try to program it from start to end. And during the programming of our login scenario, we will encounter the given, AND, WHEN, and THEN step. So this is how the class will go. Uh, let us quickly uh, move on to the next slide, uh, which is our first slide. Uh, in this slide, we are talking about some login scenarios. So as discussed uh, earlier, uh, in for for the classes coming for the coming classes, we would need some concrete scenarios. So let us just formalize uh, three basic scenarios, uh, which belong to the login functionality on store.demoqa.com. Uh, which is the website, which is the application and test which we had taken since the very beginning of uh, this session, uh, of this class, these classes that uh, we had. So uh, we will have the login scenarios for store.demoqa.com. And these are the three login scenarios that I would like to bring uh, for this class. So the first scenario is verify that when user clicks on my account link, then login page is displayed. So if I quickly go back to uh, right here, uh, if I go back to uh, the browser and if I say store.demoqa.com, and then um, let me just show you what the scenario is. So the scenario is verify that when user clicks on my account link, then login page is displayed. So basically, Let me just open it again. Yeah, so this is the store.demoqa.com website. So the first scenario is if I click on the My Account link, I should get on to the login page. Very simple scenario. Then the second scenario is verify that user is able to log in using a valid username and password. So we will just enter valid username and password and we will click on login. The expectation is that user should be able to log in. And then the third scenario is verify that user is not able to log in using invalid username and valid password. So I will just enter invalid username and then I will add uh, a random password. I will type in a random password and then I will do login. So you user shouldn't be able to log in. So these are the three scenarios that we will uh, have as our scenarios which we will work on. Now, uh, if you look at the process that you follow uh, in your company, you would more or less you would just document all your scenarios somewhere, right? So uh, let's say we are about to start on Cucumber. So before starting on Cucumber, we will just want to write some scenarios uh, right there on a notepad or an Excel file for our reference, right? So what I have done is I have uh, created a small, uh, a small Excel file where I have written down all the login scenarios. So I will just open it for you. So this is the Excel file uh, that have uh, that I have created where we have all the login scenarios that we talked about here in the slide. Now the first column uh, denotes the uh, test case number or a scenario number which is starting from 1, 2, uh, 3. Then we have the scenario description uh, which is exactly the same as what we have here. right? Now, 
as we are writing our tests in Cucumber, I have added scenario step, which is nothing but the given when and then steps. And then I have added the scenario step description. Now, um, this one scenario from here to here would make a one Cucumber scenario in our feature file. So these are the, these are the uh, four scenarios that we have. Now, let me, these are the three scenarios that we have. Now let me just move on to the next slide and let's see what we have. Uh, in the next slide, we have the AND keyword. And this is a keyword which we haven't discussed yet. So I would like to introduce the AND keyword. Now let, to introduce the AND keyword, let us just take a look at the scenarios that we have. Let us take a look at the first scenario. The first scenario is verify that when user clicks on my account link, then login page is displayed. Now, in order to perform this scenario, we have three scenario steps, given, when, and then. The given says, user is on store.demoqa.com. When says, a user clicks on my account link. So given is basically precondition. When is the user action. And then is the post condition or the condition that we want to validate. Right. So this is how... Uh, as discussed in our previous classes, this is how given when and then uh, steps are written. Given represents a precondition, when represents a user action, then represents a post condition. Now this is a very simple scenario where uh, we can do with only these three uh, keywords, right? Because we don't have a complex step here in this particular scenario. Let's say we have a complex step in our scenario. Um, how would we represent a complex step? For example, let us just take a look at this particular scenario. It says verify that user is able to log in using a valid username and password. Now, in order to perform this scenario, you would have a given, which is the precondition. You would say user is on store.demoqa.com. Right, this is the pre precondition. Then you would want to say that when user clicks on my account link, that, that is a user action. Now, this is a user action number one. Then you would also want the user to type in a valid username and password. Or you want the user to log in with a valid username and password. That is a user action two, right? So how can you club in multiple user actions? In this case, user actions, but uh, it can also be multiple preconditions. It can also be multiple post conditions. So whenever there are multiple conditions for a given step, how can you club them together? You can use the AND keyword. So here we want to describe multiple whens, right? We want to say when user clicks on my account link and the user logs in using a valid username and password. So to club conditions, we use the AND keyword. The AND keyword is simple, A-N-D, and the corresponding annotation for the AND keyword is at the rate end. Right, this is the annotation. We will discuss about it in a few minutes. So let me just remove it, and let me go back to the slide. Let's see what it says. So slide says that AND keyword is used to append conditions to your given when or then keywords. So basically you can have an AND with a given, or you can have an AND with a when, or you can have an AND with a then. So basically whenever it is in, uh, it is with any of these three keywords, it means that there is an additional condition for that particular step. In this case, we just saw that uh, we have an additional condition with a when keyword. You can have it with a given and then keyword as well. Now, here is a small example. It says that given user is on home page and user clicks on the My Account link. So these two things combined make two given conditions, preconditions. So for your test case here, there are two preconditions as opposed to one. To append multiple conditions, you can use the AND keyword. So here we have two AND, two given conditions, right? Pay attention that we have two given conditions. Had it been when? like this example when in this example we have two user actions 
when we have two whens because this and and is with the when right so pay attention to this part uh, so and is used to append conditions to your given when or then keywords now a step definition a step definition can be written using at the rate and annotation now i am uh, i have just said can be written i did not say that should be written with the at the rate and keyword at the rate and annotation i will uh, show you what i mean by by may here uh, so we will see it in in the coming slides so this was the and keyword it's a new keyword we will use it frequently in our tests now before i move forward uh, to to our next slide let me just uh, quickly uh, quickly talk about what we have discussed till now so till now in this class we have identified three scenarios which we will use uh, to understand cucumber concepts these scenarios will be programmed by us from start to end uh, which means that we will create a feature file and then we will create the step definitions now with these scenarios i have also introduced the and keyword which is used to club in conditions with the given when and then keywords so with this understanding let us just move on to the excel file where i have uh, kept all my scenarios so i will just remove this part so to understand the and keyword in real life also let us just pick up this scenario the one which is marked with yellow so here uh, what we will do we will just go back to our uh, feature file i will just remove everything that we had from our previous classes I will just remove all the step definitions. We will start afresh. We will just try to program this one scenario from start to end. Now I will remove all the imports as well. So the first thing that you would do in your project is you create a feature file. So you would say that this is a login tests feature file. Right, and I will add a small description. This feature file contains all the login tests. Simple as that right this is the description now the first thing that i would do is i would add a scenario now the scenario we have already written that so the scenario would be uh, this particular text here there you go we have the scenario and then i will add a given keyword so i would say given our given step is this i would say given user is on store.demoqa.com and then i would say when user clicks on my account link then not then we have to have the and keyword and user logs in using a valid username and password and after that i would uh, have our then statement which is the then step which is this so basically right now i have just created my feature uh, uh, created my scenario in a feature file now once you create the scenarios you will get these exclamation marks which says that the scenario step definitions are not present all right so don't worry about that we will create the scenario step definition in a few minutes now a quick trick here uh, in order to make your file look little pretty what you can do is you can select all the text you can do a right click and you can select uh, pretty format the shortcut is Control shift f now pay attention how it changes the look and feel of the file so all you have to do is just right click do a pretty format and it will put proper um, tabs and spaces around so that your your feature file looks a little better all right so now we have a feature file but we are missing our login uh, we are missing our step definitions so how to find the step definitions as discussed in the previous classes all we have to do is just right click and do a run as run as cucumber feature so when we do that uh, we get some message here uh, in the console window uh, let me expand the console window so in the console window it says that it was able to find the feature file it says that it was able to find a scenario uh, and the scenario contained four steps so it says that there was there was one scenario and four steps but at the same time it says that the four scenario four steps i'm sorry it says that it was able to find one scenario and there were four steps in the scenario it here it says that the four steps in the scenario were not defined so it says four undefined 
Now, it says undefined and it also gives you a suggestion that you can add the step definitions like this. So we will just copy the method signatures and what we will do is we will go back to our step definition file. Uh, at this point in time, the step definition file is empty because we just removed everything. I will paste all my step definitions right here. So when I paste my step definitions, the suggestions uh, that we got, when I paste it here, uh, I, got, I, I will get some errors. So I will just import the right packages. Um, it's at the rate uh, given. So I will just do a dot asterisk so that it imports everything inside this package. Once I have it, I will just clear the code inside the methods. So let me just clear it. Now I will clear all the methods, right? So we are at a point where we have empty methods uh, or empty step definitions. Now, uh, let me just quickly bring up a point that I said earlier. So in, in my previous slide, I said that add the rate and annotation may be used to describe uh, an and step, right? I use the maybe keyword. Uh, the reason I used the maybe keyword was that Cucumber by default will give you a suggestion based on what step the AND keyword is appending. So in this case, if you look at the feature file, the AND keyword is appending the WHEN keyword. So it will give you a suggestion saying that this is a WHEN step, not an AND step. So that's why if you look at the step definitions, you would see that you have to when as opposed to a when and an end right so there should there should be a when and there should be an and but here it says that there are two whens right so pay attention to this part uh, and the suggestion that you will get will be based on where the and is placed this and is placed near the when that's why you're getting a suggestion for this step as a at the rate when step, right? So based on where it is placed, you will get the right suggestion. In this case, we got it as a when suggestion. We will try to change it to and, and you can see that it works perfectly fine. Uh, you will have uh, an and annotation also, so you have the liberty to change it later on. So I have changed it, changed it to and, and this is what our uh, scenario steps, step definitions look like at this point in time. So right now what we have done, we have created a feature file for one of the scenarios that we identified. This was the scenario and uh, this is the feature file and this is the particular scenario that we have identified and this is the step definition for the scenario. Now let me move on to the next slide. So uh, this particular slide just talks about the scenario. Uh, the scenario that we are trying to take is verify that user is able to log in using valid username and password. And then uh, here it says that this is a note uh, which says that try to make scenarios as much detailed as possible. That That is what we have tried to do. We have uh, tried to add all the details in the scenario itself. For example, here we said user is on the store.demoqa.com. So we are adding the details as we go forward. Now, moving on to the next slide. The next slide says, uh, uh, talks about the given step. So let's see how we can implement our first given step. So I will slow down a bit. I will go back here and you, you would see that the first step is user is on store.demoqa.com. In order to implement this step, the first thing that I would need is I will need Selenium binaries, Selenium jars, so that I can interact with the browser. Then I will need to create a web driver. And then oh, sorry about that. I just accidentally invoked uh, narrator application so I would just uh, as I was talking about uh, so there are these three things that I would need in order to implement the given step so the first one is I will need selenium jars I will the second step is I will need to create a web driver and then 
I will need to navigate to store.demoqa.com qa.com in order to complete our first given step. So it, it's basically a three-step process internally. So I have to code for these three steps. Right. So let us do the first step first. So I will need to I will need selenium jars. So let me just add the selenium jars in my project. So I will go here and I would see do I have selenium jars? No, I don't have selenium jars. So the first thing I will do, I will right click on the project, go to properties, uh, go to builder, no, not, not builders, the Java build path and I would do, I will go to the libraries tab and I would do a add external jars. Now uh, my selenium binaries are located somewhere here. So I would just pick up all the selenium binaries from here, add it to the project. I will again do it, I will move one folder up and I will include the other selenium jars as well and I will click on OK. So there you go. I have my selenium reference libraries here. So you can see uh, we have the selenium java libraries here. So all I have to do uh, now is the second step. I, I will need to create a web driver. Now I will need to create a web driver inside the given statement because this is the statement that requires the web driver. So the first thing I would do is I would say web driver driver equals to new uh, Chrome driver. Right, this is how you create a web driver in Selenium. Uh, all you have to do is just import the right packages. I would import this one. I will import Chrome. So this is the first step that we have done. Now the second step is all you have to do is just navigate to store.demoqa.com. So what you will do is you will do driver.get and you would simply just navigate to store.demoqa.com. Right, simple as that. You have just implemented your first step definition, which is uh, this user is on store.demoqa.com. Right, simple as that. Now let us run our feature file again. I would right click and uh, I would right click and I would do a run as. When I do a run as, uh, it should now launch the Chrome browser. So you can see that uh, we have a Chrome browser on screen and the Chrome browser should take you to the store.demoqa.com web page. Now we are on the store.demoqa.com web page. Now this is what the given condition was all about. Right? The given condition says user is on store.demoqa.com. So what we did, we just implemented that particular programming logic inside our given condition, right? So given step definition. So here we have it. Now, uh, this is how we will implement step definitions as we move forward. So every step definition should contain the programming logic to perform that particular step, right? I will come back again. In this case, the given uh, needs to perform these three programming steps, which is first, um, well, this is not exactly a programming step. First thing is that you would need to include your Selenium jars. The second step would be to create a web driver. And then the third step would be to navigate to a particular website. This is exactly what we have done here in the given condition. Now, this thing uh, looks really odd because here, uh, we have just taken chromedriver.com. We could run our tests on Firefox and IE also, but at this point in time, we have hard-coded our tests to Chrome driver. So don't worry about it. We will talk about how we can parameterize the driver creation in our coming uh, tutorials. But for the time being, just assume that we are doing it on Chrome driver. We will be running everything on Chrome driver. So this was our first step. Right, now let us implement the second step. The second step says that user clicks on my account link. So all you have to do is uh, find the web element, element representing my account link. Oh, small problem here. So. And the second thing that you would want to do is 
once you have identified the element the second thing you would want to do is click on the link that's all right so these are the two steps that you have to perform now how can you do that let's just quickly take a look at the login page the link that we want to click on is the my account link so we, we will first need to identify this link so what I will do I will just right click on it and do an inspect and inspect would show me that this is the particular link here right so at this point uh, the class name seems to be little uh, uh, seems to be um, something which is unique so I can directly identify the element using the class name so I will simply do something like this I will just copy the class name which is account icon right now let us program this step so the first thing you would need is you would need you would need a driver right and this driver shouldn't should cannot be any driver it has to be the driver that we created earlier in in the previous step definition right so we need to use that driver so if I try to use that driver I will get an error the reason is that this driver does not exist because the driver that we created earlier was in the context of the method only it was a local variable for the method which got destroyed as the step as the cucumber came out of this particular step definition right so what we will do is we will first make it as a class member and because we need it across the class and we need to have it uh, have one driver so the first thing I will do is I will create a class member called web driver and then in the first given step we would instantiate the driver to Chrome driver and then later on we will use this so we would first find the web element web element as uh, my account link equals to driver dot find element and then by dot class name and the class name is account icon right this is the class name that we found from the HTML so I will simply use this to I will simply use this to find the element I will import the web element package and once I have the web element I will simply go ahead and click on it done I will remove the comment now uh, user clicks on my account link this was the second step in our step definition you would see this is the second step and we have just given uh, a meaning to this particular step definition right let us test it out so all you can do you can just go back here do a run as cucumber feature and we will wait uh, for uh, wait to see what happens so it opens up uh, the browser it navigates to a particular page and then it clicks on the my account link so once it has clicked on the my account link we reach to the my account login page right this is how we just implemented the second step and the step was executed successfully right we will follow the same process to implement the other steps uh, which is the and step now and step says user logs in using a valid username and password right now if I go back to this particular Excel so in order to log in in order to log in using a valid username and password what are the steps that you have to perform the first step is find the username field and enter a username then you have to find the password field and enter the password and then you have to click on the login button right these are the three things that you have to do uh, if I go back to the application find the username field add something here uh, enter something here for example the uh, the username and then uh, in the password field enter the password and then click on the login button so let us find these elements first so all you have to do is just right click on username uh, do a inspect and you can see that this particular text field this this is a this is an input field and this input field has an ID of log right so what I will do I will simply go back I will find the login 
edit or the login uh, field equals to driver dot find element and there I would say ID and the ID is log and then I would uh, simply do login field dot send keys and then I have this uh, test account that I created earlier the username is learn cucumber and type in uh, username I would add a small comment here username similarly I will follow the same step to actually have the password field as well I would say driver dot find element by dot ID and let us see what the password field looks like I would inspect the password field and here this is again an input field and it has an ID of PWD so it simply just go by and find the element and then I would send keys to this particular uh, element and the password that I have kept was test password one two three at the rate and then I would type in the password I will just add a small comment so that uh, it makes it clear what we are doing and the third step is I would find the login button right so I would simply say driver dot find element by and I will go back here I will find what the login button is all about the login button is basically uh, with an ID of login so I would just copy the ID and I would say login and I would say login button dot click there you go we have just created let me just add a comment first uh, click on login button Right. we have just implemented our third step as well so let us quickly test it out right click on the feature file do a run as cucumber feature and when you do that it should launch the cucumber browser it should it should take you to the my account it should click on the my account link and then it should enter the username and password and then click click on the login button once it does that you can see that now I am logged in right there you go I'm logged in right I'm the I'm on the logged in home page now this is this was the third step and we implemented the third step properly right if I go back here yeah so basically we we have uh, successfully implemented the first three steps and you can see that it is that easy to implement uh, your step definitions all you have to do is just create a logic around how uh, these steps are bound together and just write the program which will perform the necessary actions for example in the first step all we had to do was just create a Chrome driver and navigate to the respective page in the second um, step all we had to do is click on the my account link and similarly in the third step we had to just enter the username and password and then click on the login button now in the fourth step if you go back here the fourth step talks about that we have to verify that user is taken on the my account page now how can you verify that how can you verify that user is logged in successfully now in order to verify that we will find out an element which appears only for a, a logged in user and the logout button is something which is present only for the logged in user so if the user uh, if the current page after login uh, is showing the logout button that means the user has successfully signed in right so we will just put a check on the logout button so I will simply say I will simply find uh, the logout button I will right click on it and it says that this is this is a link basically this is a div just a minute sorry for that uh, a small disturbance so um, yeah so basically um, to identify 
whether a user is logged in or not. All we have to do is just uh, find out whether the logout button is present or not. So uh, what I will do, I will just first identify the logout button. Uh, the logout button has an ID of, uh, it's basically a div and div with an ID of account logout. So I will just find this element and I will check uh, if this element is present, then I would say our test case passed. Now, all you have to do is just find this element. You can say logout dev equals to driver dot find element by dot ID. And in the ID, you would just find this link. Now, pay attention that finding this link itself uh, uh, is basically an operation which can throw an exception because if the element is not present an exception will be thrown here and that exception would mean that the test failed this particular step failed so all you can do is just have uh, a small line where you are just finding the element and uh, that's all if this is successful the, the test will pass and everything will pass but if this if the element is not present this particular uh, method will throw an exception and it will make Cucumber fail the particular test. So this is how we implemented our final step, which was the then step. Now, for all other scenarios that we have talked about here, I would request you to write your own step definitions and own feature files and implement it exactly the way that we have implemented uh, our given uh, steps. Right. So let me just quickly add uh, one more thing here. But if it exists, we have successfully logged in. Okay. So uh, basically, what why I am writing this here is that uh, is because you have a clear understanding of what you have to program for each step. Right. So that is the reason I am writing uh, whatever is required to perform uh, a particular action properly. Right. So there you go. Uh, you can also uh, at home when you practice, you can write these things out in front of every step and you can write the, the relevant. You can write the relevant code. So let us quickly check it out. Let us just run the scenario again. I would do a run as cucumber feature and let's see what we get. It launches uh, the browser. It takes you to the login page and then it logs in. So when it logs in, uh, it gives you an error message and you get no such element exception. Now once you get the no such el element exception, a one step fails and it properly reports that one step has failed and if you go ab above it will actually tell you where the test failed so it will say that at this particular step while executing this particular step we got an exception which was no such element exception right now we got this exception because there is a reason for that but here we can clearly see that if an exception is raised in your test step Cucumber assumes the test step to be failed, right? That's why it reports that there was one scenario, the scenario failed, and there were four steps, one failed and three passed. Now, in, in the JUnit reporter, it would report it properly. Uh, we will talk about the proper reporting in a minute, but let us first see why the test failed. Now, the test failed because we clicked on the login button and then we directly started finding the account logout, which is not correct because you would see that once you log in, it takes a few milliseconds for the user to actually reach the login page, uh, the, the logged in my account page, right? So we have to inform driver that it has to wait for a few seconds or, um, or minutes before trying to find the element or it has to give certain uh, delay or give certain liberty for the page to load completely. So what I will do, I will just put a implicit wait right now. So I can say that uh, I want to put a timeout and I want to put an implicit wait 
I want to put an implicit weight of uh, uh, let's say three minutes or let's say two minutes so I would say implicit weight of minutes now once you put an implicit weight of minutes what will happen is that um, while finding the element which is this element the web driver will keep on querying the browser for this element after every 250 milliseconds till two minutes is completed so it will wait it, it will periodically query the browser whether the element exists or not for two minutes so if the element exists within two minutes uh, the test case will pass if it doesn't exist within two minutes the test case will fail so let us run the test again but this time instead of doing a right click and doing a run as uh, I would go to our J unit test uh, runner or what I will do I will just go to the cucumber runner right click on it and do a run as and I will do run as J unit test so when I do this uh, my J unit test runner will open up and the test will start executing you can see that it has taken you to the store.demoqa.com it will enter a username and password and this time this time you would see that you would get no exception here and it would clearly report that there were four steps and there was one scenario and all of them passed if you look at your test runner you can see that it is reporting all the test steps as passed so it is saying that your test, your scenario passed and this scenario had these steps and these steps also passed successfully. All right. So basically this is how you will create a scenario and its respective step definitions and then you would add, you, uh, I'm sorry, you will create a scenario, then you will create respective steps and then you would create respective step definitions. In the step definitions, you would write the logic, write the code which performs that particular action or which performs that particular task which is mentioned in that particular step. All right, so uh, with this, um, I hope that everything was clear and you now can create other scenarios on your own. So I would request you to just go through the other scenarios, practice them and create your own scenarios. So we will meet in the next class. I will close this class uh, with these many topics. Thank you.